the crust of our Earth is composed of many different minerals. Most of these minerals contain compounds of silicon. Silicon compounds make up more than 85% of the Earth's crust in the form of rock, clay, and sand. Common sand is one of the most familiar silicon compounds. Pure quartz sand is silicon dioxide. The name silica is commonly used for this compound. Silica, or common sand, has long been used as a building material. It is an important ingredient of concrete, which is a mixture of gravel, cement, sand, and water. Our buildings have windows made of another silicon compound, glass. Looking through glass store windows, we may see familiar products such as porcelain and chinaware, made of still other silicon compounds. These beautiful gemstones, both precious and semi-precious, are also compounds of silicon. Among the newer man-made silicon compounds are synthetic products called silicones. They include lubricants, paints, polishes, and coatings of many kinds. Silicones are the forerunners of a whole family of new synthetics. Many silicones, such as these products of silicone rubber, resemble carbon compounds in certain ways. The reason is that silicon and carbon have certain similar properties, which we can understand by considering their atomic structure. Here is a cutaway diagram of the silicon atom, showing its concentric electron shells, or energy levels, and subshells. The silicon atom has 14 protons and 14 neutrons in the nucleus. It has 14 electrons in its three main shells, two in the first, eight in the second, and four in the third. Its atomic number is 14. The carbon atom has six protons and six neutrons in the nucleus. It has six electrons, two in the inner shell, and four in the outer shell. So both carbon and silicon have four electrons in the outer shell. And both elements can form compounds by sharing electrons. For example, four hydrogen atoms each share electrons with one carbon atom to form methane, a simple carbon compound. In a similar way, electrons of four hydrogen atoms are shared with silicon to form silane, a compound similar to methane. Knowing that silicon has certain properties similar to those of carbon, let's see where these elements are in the periodic table. Silicon is found in the carbon family of the elements, which also includes germanium, tin, and lead. What can we tell about silicon from its position in the periodic table? The left-hand side of the table contains metals. These form bases. The right-hand side of the table contains non-metals. These form acids. Like other elements along this borderline, silicon is amphoteric. That is, it shows properties of both metals and non-metals. The compound silicon dioxide, being ground here in a mortar, is an acid anhydride. It reacts as an acid in combining with metallic oxides. With calcium oxide, it will form calcium silicate. With potassium oxide, potassium silicate. With magnesium oxide, magnesium silicate. We find such silicates among rocks, minerals, and gemstones. Some of these can be cut and polished to make the gems used in jewelry. Pure quartz, silicon dioxide, can be polished to a hard, transparent substance resembling glass. Ordinary glass is usually made from these materials. Quartz sand, or silicon dioxide, sodium carbonate, and calcium carbonate. These ingredients, sand, soda, and limestone, are used in making glass. In this factory, the ingredients are mixed and then fused under high temperature. 
The resulting mixture of silicates is glass. Glass is one of the most important industrial products made of silicon compounds. Another industrial product, that is a silicon compound, is silicon carbide. If you have sharpened a knife or other tool, you've probably used silicon carbide as the commercial product called carborundum. Carborundum is an extremely hard material used as an abrasive. Industrially, carborundum is used to grind metallic products, since it is harder than most metals. Here, a sample of silicon carbide is being tested for hardness. If we were to compute the results, we'd find that silicon carbide is much harder than steel. Let's examine the properties of other silicon compounds. The lubricant on the right is a petroleum oil, a carbon compound. The lubricant on the left is one of the recently developed silicones, a silicon compound. Under prolonged high temperatures, the carbon oil decomposes and becomes more viscous. The synthetic oil, the silicone, shows no apparent change. For this reason, the synthetic oil is used in engines such as this airplane engine, where resistance to great heat is required. So a silicone, such as this synthetic oil, can be used as a substitute for a petroleum product, a carbon compound. We remember that carbon atoms can form compounds by sharing electrons, linking with one another and other elements and radicals to form chains. Chemists have learned how to break up such chains, rearrange them, and synthesize seemingly endless numbers of carbon compounds, such as this one, which is thiamine. Silicon, too, can form long chain compounds. For example, chains of alternate silicon and oxygen atoms form silicones. These chains, like carbon chains, can be combined with various radicals to form many silicone compounds. This is a segment of a molecule of dimethyl silicone. Dimethyl silicone is used as a water repellent on many materials, even absorbent materials such as cloth. Here we apply water to two samples of the same cloth. The sample on the left has been treated with the silicone and is more water repellent. Even after the water has soaked into the untreated cloth, the treated cloth retains its repellent property. This property is put to use in making cloth raincoats that are water repellent. Some of the unusual properties of silicones can be demonstrated with the silicone compound popularly called bouncing putty. Formed into a ball, it will bounce. Stretched slowly, it is pliable. Pulled sharply, it snaps. A hard blow causes it to shatter like brittle plaster. Yet it can be immediately reshaped and bounced as before. Unusual properties are also found in another silicon compound, silicone rubber. Here we have chilled a sample of silicone rubber and a piece of natural rubber. The silicone rubber is on the left. After chilling, both pieces of rubber, which are of the same dimensions, are tested for resistance to tearing. The silicone rubber on the left retains its elasticity under stress. The natural rubber tears first. In this demonstration, we are subjecting two samples of rubber to very low temperatures in liquid nitrogen. The natural rubber is on the right, the silicone rubber is on the left. The natural rubber shatters. The silicone rubber is still pliable and elastic. Silicone insulation for electrical wiring is superior to other types in heat resistance. 
Here, both wires are subjected to the same current overload. The rubber insulation begins to burn, the silicone insulation does not. Because of excellent heat resistant and insulating properties, silicone rubbers are being increasingly used in electrical industries. Here, an electronic element is being placed into a mold. Now, a silicone rubber, a synthetic compound, is poured into the mold to form an insulation around the electronic element. The element has been completely insulated in a covering of silicone rubber. Because of the extraordinary stability of silicones under extremes of physical and chemical action, the use of silicone products is growing. Silicone compounds are very useful not only as insulation, coatings, lubricants, and repellents in everyday products, but silicones are also being used in the specialized new materials for components in rockets and satellites. It is interesting to realize that silicon, one of the most common and abundant elements in the Earth's crust, is today the source of compounds that are playing an important role in new breakthroughs of industry and science.